you know, we're, we're going to need more welfare advice for, for as far as I can see into the future. And people are going to have to manage a month's money at a time. Yes. And they're going to have to manage it themselves, including the rent. A lot yes. of people get the rent paid and all the benefits for a month. And people who aren't good at money management, which a lot, especially people with addictions or gambling issues or yeah. whatever, um, will be likely to be in a mess or whatever. Uh, so so how, how, can, how can a person be classified as vulnerable? Is it difficult or is it easy? Um, it's not straightforward because there's no classification of what vulnerable is under the current regulations. Um, so at the moment it is something that's being looked at, it's one of the things that's being identified by the Pathfinder office, offices at the moment. The Pathfinder offices, what's that? Their offices um, around the country that are testing the system, so they're, they're testing some of the universal credit. Office, test offices of what? Job centre offices. Job centre. So yeah. some, some um, people claiming benefits and tenants are already um, part of the direct payment system getting their benefits paid directly to them rather than it getting paid directly to the landlords. So that's just on an experimental basis being around trialed. the country. It's being trialled. It's being trialled. So the whole thing's going to kick in in April. And, and, they, and they haven't even decided no, at no, this it's stage. Not all, no, not for universal credit. No, it's not kicking in. It's October, it's October, isn't it? October. October. Yeah. It's October. It's, so it's the, it's the change in the, in the, the, um, the, one, the bedroom tax the kicks bedroom in. bedroom tax. In yeah, and the council tax changes kick in in April. The universal credit rolls out from October. Housing associations are not going to have the money to be able to do the repairs, to be able to rebuild, to be able to maintain properties. I totally agree with what Liz saying. Is, it is, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I've spoken to police officers who are predicting the crime will rise. Yeah. Um, one positive note uh, on behalf of LHT is they have gone down the road that there will be no forced evictions, which is some reassurance for people. Obviously, it's not going to be a green life for people to just go into arrears and think there's nothing to happen. But I, I, well, nobody can speak for the other RSLs. I would just hope that they have a sympathetic... Uh, the two Helens on the left here they're there to give people advice. It's been sent out in the newsletters. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can't, they don't want to contact them directly, they can do it to one of our panels, to another member of staff, to their, their housing officer, you know, the drop-in centres. At the moment, our main role has been to get the information out to tenants. Mm. We are completing surveys with all the tenants that we're speaking to. Um, okay. to try and identify the support needs that they will have as the reforms come in okay. and then obviously we will be looking at how best to provide the, the necessary support to on the, on the question of inclusion of people from other countries um, is there a full range of language facilities it, it can, can, it can it, interpreters be found for any, any language we can access interpreters if it's necessary of any language as far as I know, yeah. it's not a facility that I've used, but yeah. as far as I know, yeah. Yeah. I think we're giving out as much information as we can. Mm -hmm. There are decisions that still need to be made by senior management um, yeah. on some of the issues that are being raised through the welfare reforms, particularly through the bedroom tax that's coming in. When I've spoken to other tenants of all the other ones, they, they've never, there's no uh, mention of, uh, oh, we've got, oh, we've got a welfare rights advisor that we can... Uh, contact they may have but obviously the tenant is not getting that information out Helen also told me that um, on the leaflet it said you can ring the 019 number and speak to a reform advisor but they are thinking of bringing in a free phone customer service customer service, customer service. service. Yeah. 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 Free phone. Number, yeah. also that the welfare reform advisor will ring you back so I thought maybe just clarify that because it's well. not actually on the leaflet but um, if you ring, then you can ring back. Yeah. I can actually yeah. confirm that because I have yeah. rung the girls up and they have rung me back and, and sorted uh, out. Because people have asked me in the district and I've rung uh, 
either Helen up and uh, they've got the answer for me and I've been able to tell the tenant okay. what they wanted to know. Just We've had a consultant come in, Terry Bonner, yeah, mm -hmm. um, who came in to look at a lot of the things that are still working on, so he's working with the management to look at getting them policies boxed off and dealt with, so I would have thought it's going to be probably early, early in, the new year, yeah, right. in the new year that that'll be sorted out. We have got a lot of the government information, mm -hmm. um, but it was only recently that we got some of it when the regulations came out at the beginning of December, so we, we, there is still are bits that are a little bit hazy. It is right, we're passing on everything that we do know of. No. Uh, there's a pilot in North Liverpool of a hub that has a, um, access to computers where people can be yeah, shown how to yeah. access information yeah. required yeah. Good. and like employability yeah. officers and things like that. So it is being piloted, a similar kind of concept. It's a great suite, actually. It is a great suite.